Hi, I'm Laura, a 32-year-old content marketer, living what I thought was a perfect life with my husband Jack, also 32, a successful real estate agent. Before I dive into our story, please like and subscribe for more tales from the heart and life lessons learned the hard way. Our life was neatly planned. No kids, just us. Careers thriving. And freedom cherished. Everything changed when Jack's brother David and his wife Mary tragically died in a car accident. They left behind their two-year-old daughter, Emma. Jack's parents, too old and frail, couldn't take her in. Despite our child-free agreement, how could we say no? We decided to take Emma in temporarily. It's just for a while, Laura, until we figure things out with social services or maybe find her a family. Jack was convincing, but I could see the uncertainty in his eyes. Okay, but let's keep looking for the best long-term solution for her, I agreed, unsure about disrupting our lives, but feeling it was the right thing to do. Living with Emma was like stepping into an alternate universe where bedtime stories replaced business meetings and playgrounds took over from power lunches. Her laughter filled our home, unexpectedly warming my heart, making me wonder about the family life I never thought I wanted. She's just so adorable, Jack. Seeing her play, laugh, it's not as overwhelming as I feared. I know, right? She's got Mary's smile, Jack remarked one evening, a hint of sadness in his voice that I couldn't quite place. One night, while Jack was late again at a supposed client meeting, I decided to organize Emma's room. Buried under a pile of stuffed animals and children's books, I found an envelope, an envelope that was about to detonate like a bomb in my lap. It contained a birth certificate and a paternity test confirming the inconceivable. Jack was Emma's biological father. I sat frozen, the papers trembling in my hands. The man I trusted, the life we built, all a facade. When Jack finally came home, I was waiting. The documents laid out like a jury's verdict on the kitchen table. What is this, Jack? Please, tell me there's some mistake. My voice was a mix of disbelief and desperation. Jack's face crumbled, the secrets etching deep lines of regret as he sat down, taking a deep breath. I... I don't know how to say this, Laura. It was a mistake. A huge, terrible mistake. It was during that rough patch we went through. I was weak, and it just... happened. A mistake? That's what you call sleeping with your brother's wife? And she had a child, Jack. How long were you planning to keep this from me? I never planned to. Mary and I agreed it was best for Emma to grow up thinking David was her father. It was all falling apart, and then... They died. I thought it would never come out. And what now? You bring her here as our niece while you figure out how to tell me you have a daughter? My voice broke, the pain sharp and overwhelming. I'm so sorry, Laura. I never meant to hurt you or her. I was going to tell you, I swear. But finding the right moment... It never seemed right. Right? There will never be a right moment to drop a bombshell like this. You've made your choices, Jack. And now I need to make mine. The man I knew, the life we shared, was a lie. As Jack pleaded, tears welling up in his eyes, the foundation of our marriage crumbled. I knew what I had to do. This wasn't just about a betrayal. It was about finding who I was in the debris of this devastation. The idea of staying in the same house with Jack choked me, every corner a reminder of the deception. I packed a suitcase with Emma's essentials. Laura, please, let's talk about this. I'm begging you. Jack's voice was desperate, his steps heavy as he followed me from room to room. Talk? Like how you talk to Mary? I zipped up Emma's bag, my hands shaking. Or was that more... action than talk? I ended it, Laura. It was over before I even knew about Emma. I swear to you, it was a one-time mistake that haunted me every day. His plea hung heavy between us, but it was too late for remorse. A one-time mistake that walks, talks, and needs us now more than ever. You don't get to use one time as an excuse for creating a whole life, Jack. I hefted the bag over my shoulder. Emma clutched in my other arm, her eyes wide and scared. We're going to my parents. I can't be here. You can't just take her, Laura. I'm her father. The edge in Jack's voice was new, sharp and panicked. You think you have a say in her life after lying about her existence? No, Jack. You forfeited that right. Pushing past him to the door, I felt a surge of resolve. Emma needed protection, not just from the chaos, but from the man who'd complicated her life before it had even begun. At my parents' house, 
The familiar smells and sights brought a small comfort. My mother enveloped us in a warm embrace, her presence soothing Emma's whimpers. Mom, I don't know what to do. He's her father, and he lied to us all. Sweetheart, you're doing what you need to protect yourself and this little girl. My mom stroked Emma's back, her gaze filled with sorrow and support. What Jack did is unforgivable. We're here for you, no matter what. As Emma settled into a temporary crib, I dialed the family lawyer, the weight of each ring heavy in the silence of my old bedroom. Laura, how can we help? The lawyer's voice was crisp, professional. I need to file for divorce, and I need to know what steps to take regarding Emma. Jack, he's her biological father, but he's not on her birth certificate. David is. We'll start with a petition for divorce and discuss custody. Given the circumstances, you have a strong case, but it will be complicated. Hanging up, I braced myself for the onslaught of reactions from Jack's family. The phone buzzed relentlessly. Texts, calls, voicemails, each one a plea or an accusation. You're tearing the family apart, Jack's mother's voice crackled through the voicemail. You're overreacting, Laura. Think about what's best for Emma. His sister's text was less sympathetic. But amid the storm, a text from Jack's cousin, Sarah, offered a lifeline. Laura, I'm so sorry. If you need anything, I'm here. Not all of us agree with how Jack handled things. As night fell, the reality settled in. My marriage was over, but the battle for Emma and my future was just beginning. Laura, we need to talk. This isn't just about us anymore. It's about Emma. Jack stood at the door, uninvited and unwelcome, his voice straining with desperation as he tried to push past the doorway of my parents' home. You lost the right to talk when you decided to lie to me, to everyone about Emma. My response was sharp, the door half-closed, blocking him from entering. You need to leave, Jack. You shouldn't be here. I'm her father, Laura. Doesn't that mean anything? I'm trying to fix this. His plea was met with silence as I considered his words. Despite everything, he was still Emma's biological father. But could I ever trust him again? Being a father is more than just biology. It's about honesty, integrity, qualities you forgot when you deceived us all. Closing the door firmly, I turned away, the click of the lock sounding final. The next week, I met with my lawyer, Mr. Thompson, his office a stark, formal space that matched the gravity of our conversation. We filed the initial paperwork for the divorce, but Jack is pushing back hard on the custody arrangements. He's also filed for joint custody. I don't trust him, Mr. Thompson, not after everything. How do we ensure Emma stays with me? It's going to be a battle, Laura. You need to be prepared for this to get messier before it gets better. Document everything, and let's get character references from your family and friends. We need to show that you offer a stable, loving environment. He's going to fight dirty. I can feel it. We'll fight smarter. Trust me. Back at home, I juggled my work deadlines with caring for Emma, her laughter a balm on the tough days. My parents were rocks, supporting us unconditionally, providing not just love, but also the practical help I desperately needed. One evening, as Emma played with blocks on the living floor, I received a call from Sarah, Jack's cousin. Laura, I heard about the custody filings. I can't believe Jack is dragging you through this. If you need me to testify about your relationship with Emma, I'm here. Thank you, Sarah. It means a lot, especially coming from Jack's side of the family. He's lost it, Laura. We all see it. You're doing the right thing. The weeks rolled into months, each day a mix of legal documents, meetings, and little moments with Emma that kept me grounded. Jack's attempts to reach out continued, each more desperate than the last. I've been thinking a lot, and I messed up, Laura. I can't lose you or Emma. Can't we try counseling? Jack's voice cracked with emotion over the phone. It's too late for that, Jack. You should have thought about counseling before you betrayed our marriage. Please, Laura, don't do this to our family. You did this, Jack. Not me. Remember that. As the court date approached, the tension was palpable. Sitting in the stark, cold courtroom, I clutched my notes, my hands trembling slightly. This was it. The moment that would decide our futures. Mrs. Hall, are you ready to proceed? Mr. Thompson whispered, giving me a reassuring nod. Yes. Let's end this. I took a deep breath, ready to fight for the future Emma deserved, free from the shadows of Jack's mistakes. The court is now in session. Mrs. Hall, you're here to finalize your divorce and seek full custody of Emma, correct? 
The judge's voice echoed in the courtroom, a solemn reminder of the gravity of our situation. Yes, Your Honor. My voice was steady, my resolve firmer than ever as I stood before the court, Emma's future hanging in the balance. Mr. Hall, do you understand the charges against you and the claims made by Mrs. Hall? Jack stood opposite me, his face pale, his usual confidence nowhere in sight. Yes, Your Honor. I regret my actions deeply and I'm not contesting the divorce. However, I am requesting joint custody of Emma. I want to be part of her life. Mrs. Hall, please present your case. Your Honor, the stability and well-being of Emma have always been my priority. During this time, I have been her primary caregiver, providing not just for her emotional needs, but also ensuring a secure and loving environment. Jack's actions have introduced significant instability into our lives. The judge nodded, scribbling notes as I spoke. I have provided evidence of my stable job, the supportive environment provided by my family, and recommendations from our therapist, highlighting the progress Emma and I have made together. Mr. Hall, your response? I understand I made mistakes, but I am her father. Denying me the chance to be part of her life would also harm her. I have taken steps to better myself, including attending counseling and securing a stable job. Enough, both of you. I will review the documents and make my decision. The judge's finality silenced the room as we awaited her verdict. The decision came swiftly. The court grants full custody to Mrs. Laura Hall due to her demonstrated stability and commitment to Emma. Mr. Hall, you are granted supervised visitation rights. It is this court's hope that you both can co-parent effectively for Emma's sake. Relief washed over me as we exited the courtroom. The legal battle was over, but the real work of rebuilding our lives was just beginning. Emma and I moved into a new home, a cozy place filled with light and laughter, far from the shadows of the past. Our weekly therapy sessions were a place to unpack the baggage of the last few months. Mommy, why doesn't Daddy live with us? Emma's innocent question during one session caught me off guard, her small voice curious and confused. Sweetheart, sometimes families change, but no matter what, both Daddy and I love you very much. We'll both always be here for you, okay? Okay, Mommy. I love you. Emma hugged me, her small arms tight around my neck, a reminder of why every struggle was worth it. Laura, thank you for taking such good care of Emma. I know I've not been the best, but I'm trying. Can we start fresh? Jack's voice over the phone during one of our scheduled calls was hopeful. Jack, we'll always be connected through Emma, and I appreciate your efforts. Let's focus on what's best for her. That's all I ask. Agreed. Thank you, Laura. Truly. Hanging up. I looked around our little home, Emma playing, the laughter echoing off the walls, the peace that had settled over our lives. I knew we had a long road ahead, but for the first time in a long time, I felt hopeful. We were more than survivors. We were a family reborn, ready to face whatever came our way with love and resilience. Hey, Emma, want to help me plant some new flowers? We could use a bit more color out here. I called out to her as she played on the swing her laughter mingling with the gentle breeze. Yes, can we plant some yellow ones? They're my favorite. Emma's enthusiasm was infectious, her energy boundless as she ran over, a bundle of sunshine in her own right. Yellow it is. Let's make a special spot just for them. As we dug into the earth, planting new life in our garden, I couldn't help but reflect on how far we'd come, how much we'd both grown. Laura, it's been a while. I was hoping we could talk, Jack's voice from the fence caught me off guard. He looked different, more humble, less hurried. Jack, you know the rules. Scheduled calls and visits. I know, and I respect that. I just... I saw you two out here and wanted to say how great she looks. Healthy. Happy. There was a sincerity in his tone that hadn't been there before. She is. We are. Thanks to a lot of hard work and some tough choices. I can see that. Laura. I... I've been doing a lot of thinking. I messed up the biggest mistake of my life. I've been working on fixing what I can. That's good to hear, Jack. Really. It's important for Emma. I want to thank you, Laura, for being there for Emma when I couldn't, when I was the one who put you both through all this. Jack, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't about us anymore. It was about what Emma needs. I understand that now, and I hope we can all move forward, somehow. We are moving forward, Jack. Just maybe not together like before, but always with Emma's best in mind. 
watching Jack nod in understanding, then walk away, a part of me felt lighter. Turning back to Emma, who was patting down the last bit of earth around her new flowers, I realized how resilient love could be, growing through even the toughest soil. Look, Mommy, they're going to be so beautiful. Yes, sweetie, just like our little family. Different than before, but beautiful all the same. This garden, our home, and our lives were proof that with love, care, and respect, new beginnings were not only possible, but often exactly what we needed. What do you think about Laura's decision to take full custody of Emma, despite Jack's efforts to amend his mistakes? Could you see yourself making a similar decision under those circumstances, or would you have handled it differently? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the story, and subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking tales. Thanks for watching, and we can't wait to hear your thoughts.